Every day we move around the planet, the age of which is about 4.5 billion years. While the genus Homo sapiens official science gives no more than 200,000 years. But even for a tiny, by the standards of history term, we have managed to spoil the Earth. Especially, the process of littering the planet intensified in the age of industrialization. We have not only polluted the world's oceans with islands made of industrial plastic, filled the atmosphere with toxic fumes from factories and cars, cut down trees en masse and made the soil unsuitable for planting plants. The hands of the earthlings were so long that they even reached the orbit of their own planet. In the 21st century, several garbage rings have formed around the Earth, which interfere with the work of satellites and interplanetary stations, often damaging them. And if we mention the gloomy nuclear slag storages, where elements with millennia-long half-lives are lurking, the picture becomes quite depressing. Hello. That is why the problem of utilization of our waste is the most acute today. Attempts to solve it at the local level do not help to cope with global pollution of the planet. Although environmental services are still working in the sweat of their brow, waste sorting programs are actively launched. Waste processing plants are being built. But neither the installation of separate containers nor innovative technologies nor furious fines for unauthorized dumps do not help to significantly improve the situation to which we have come through our own fault. That is why some people are inclined to radical ways out of their stalemate. For example, why don't we take a closer look at the Earth's nearest environment? After all, besides rings of technogenic garbage, there is something more interesting there. In relative proximity to the Earth, a huge furnace is burning with hellfire, capable of consuming not only the Earth's garbage, but all the planets of the star system taken together. As you may have guessed, it's the Sun. Maybe we should try and send the Earth's annoying crap straight there? In principle, it is possible, but with the current technical development of human civilization to implement a useful mission, is hampered by insurmountable barriers. So, what prevents us from getting rid of garbage without polluting the atmosphere and orbit of our own planet with poisonous combustion products? It's very expensive. Problem one is the sheer unprofitability of the process. The heaviest rocket today can carry no more than 7,000 kilograms of foul-smelling containers on its board. Its launch costs about $200 million, but we are not going to leave the garbage only in orbit. There are still 150 million kilometers to the sun ahead. So, in order to prevent the Earth from turning into a planet dump from the cartoon about Robot Valley, we will need 168 million rockets with technical characteristics similar to Ariane 5. That means that Earthlings will have to shell out $33 trillion and the result will not last longer than a year. This is an unthinkable price which we are not ready to pay. And besides, the expensive ship, as you understand, will also be lost irretrievably. In addition, consider that if you deliver the cargo directly to the sun, the cost will increase tenfold. But this is far from all the woes associated with such an idea. Local risks. Remember the disaster that happened in January 1986 in the sky above Cape Canaveral and shocked the world. Then, at the 73rd second of the flight, at an altitude of 14 kilometers shuttle, Challenger suddenly exploded. All eight crew members were killed. The magnitude of the tragedy is even now beyond comprehension. Why do we bring it up? It's simple. No one is immune to malfunctions, breakdowns, and force majeure. Imagine what would happen if a rocket carrying nuclear waste to destroy it in the sun's insatiable vortex suddenly crashes. It does not matter whether it happens right at the start, in the Earth's atmosphere, or in orbit. 
the consequences would be equally irreparable. For example, the American bomb, Baby, which exploded half a kilometer above the center of Hiroshima in 1945, instantly killed tens of thousands of people. A similar effect awaits the location where a rocket loaded with nuclear debris will crash. If this happens in orbit, then mankind is guaranteed a new thrash hoop and the fallout of very unpleasant precipitation, further worsening the situation with the pollution of the Earth. Technical difficulties. The main problems of interplanetary missions are based on the same thing, the inability to develop sufficient speed to reach a remote region of the universe faster and the inability to change the trajectory of the ship at the will of the mission designers. For example, if you were to send a kamikaze shuttle from Earth right now into the deadly embrace of our star to self-immolate along with its cargo, you'd know that the ship would successfully fly past the sun. Why? Simply, the Earth revolves around its star in the direction away from it. Of course, it is on this trajectory will follow, and the shuttle. But what to do to ensure that it hits the flaming target? Necessary gravity maneuver, the implementation of which requires again, a lot of time and money, should send a cargo rocket to the planets of the outer solar system, where the speed of the ship will slow down a little, and then accelerate it with the help of engines, set the exact vector of motion and the shuttle, figuratively speaking, will shoot as from a slingshot. After a while annoying the inhabitants of the Earth garbage along with tons of iron cladding and onboard equipment will collapse directly into the sun, forever drowned in its orange depths. These problems lie on the surface and become obvious now when the garbage mission has not even begun. Most likely in the process of its organization will arise even more complexities and inconsistencies. Therefore, for now, the sun for us is only a source of heat and light, but not an incinerator. So we will have to stop accumulating unnecessary things, optimize the work of industrial facilities, and make it a rule to recycle garbage and it must be done urgently and on a planetary scale. Can the above risks be avoided? Some, yes. For example, building a space elevator would partially solve the problem with putting garbage cargoes into orbit, but other difficulties will still have to be eliminated. Perhaps you have some fresh ideas on how to do this. Then feel free to head over to the comment box and don't forget to put a like. Until new, even more exciting and informative issues. The more electronic thumbs under this video, the more comments on the topics for new videos, the more new interesting releases are released on the channel, so do not skimp on the activity. And see you soon.